<laughs> Rap Circle is finally here. I know everybody been waiting for it, right? Hey everybody, I am Pops, and I'm going to talk about a film that is now streaming over on Peacock, a universal film called Praise This. It is sort of a interesting, sweet little film. It's described as a musical comedy, but I'll tell you, it doesn't, it's not a musical. I mean, it's it's got music in it, but being billed as a musical is probably not good for its branding because it's more of just like a sweet little Christian film, sweet little... Uh, coming of age film, searching for faith, trying to do right, moral compass, uh, YA type film. Uh, it centers around two girls, Sam and Jess. Uh, Chloe Bailey plays Sam. She's sort of like the rebel. She loves to sing. She thinks she can be a writer. She's grown up in Los Angeles, gotten herself into trouble, and now she's being forced to go cross country and to Atlanta to live with the uncle. And they're kind of like staunch Christians going to church every Sunday kind of stuff. Sam's cousin, Jess, who is uh, Angelica Washington, is sort of like the nerdy Christian girl. They have uh, sort of like, I don't want to say conflict, but they're definitely mere opposites. And then they're surrounded by a wonderful cast of just interesting and different types of characters, which I really enjoy. And what Sam is doing is basically like testing the waters, right? She's, she's thinks she knows everything. It's the typical arrogant teen syndrome. Uh, the film opens with um, sort of a, a praise team competition. And Jess's church has this complete debacle of a team. It turns completely bad when the big heavy kid um, kind of goes by big love. Uh, is asked to rap and he goes completely nasty, turns everybody off, just freaks out and basically passes out. And then fast forward a year and we're into this uh, new place, new world. Sam's coming into things and that's kind of how it all goes. And look, it's an underdog story. It has all the things that you would expect from this type of uh, film. I think there's some good jokes along the way. Like I do, I do love the fact that the first things they do are sort of like the first, the initial phase of conflict, East coast versus West coast city versus kind of rural lifestyle church versus non-church. So you have, you have jokes like um, they go to put gravy on like Sam's avocado toast, right? It was, it's fun, right? Them singing together in the car when it's a non-Christian song is hysterical. It's great. And then uh, when they were, it's done, it's like, it's sort of like this whole back and forth thing about church, but also I don't know. It's a lot heavier than the way it's delivered. Like there's a conversation about, you know, I don't go to church. God's not been taking my request. And Jess is like, well, yeah, he's not Santa Claus. And it's kind of like, yeah, that's pretty heavy stuff. That's kind of where a lot of folks are. Like God doesn't show up when I want him to do. So therefore I don't believe in God and I'm not following his ways. I'm like, well, is he on your leash? Or are you trying to submit yourself to him? Like, so it's like these heavy things are kind of laced in some pretty lighthearted stuff. And I thought that was good. This is this is more of the type of, of faith-based content that I'd be more interested in having on than some of the heavy-handed stuff, which I don't think works really well. Um, I will say it's fun to see like teenagers interact in a in a more believable way. Like obviously there's a ton of like sexual tension, and there's a little bit of that that kind of comes here and there, but I love the fact that like you 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 on the surface don't get why anyone would be attracted to big love like he's just this big fat dude he's not particularly suave or cool or interesting he appears to be a pretty nice guy but then he has this comment where he's like i got you and like the girls are like swooning over him i'm like oh, that was pretty good and that i think is a better representation of some of real life teen stuff than what i see in certain ya shows that kind of thing okay now over the course of how everything is coming into play, they go through these different competitions. You can see the tensions in the group, the girl that used to be the leader versus Sam is coming in. Sam trying to be all sexy and sexy dancing versus Jess, who's wearing like overalls and, you know, she doesn't know what to do. Sam gets her to go to a party, which involves lying, the police. So a lot of the stereotype, a lot of the cliches, I, I get it. I'm not trying to prop this film up to be like a nine or a 10. Please don't even think that's even, even remotely on the table. But this is like that solid two and a half star film, right? It's like that very solid film that could be on. It's entertaining. 
it gets edgy, but not dirty. Right. So we will have a little bit of cursing, but we're not like dropping like profane bombs left and right. They'll talk about sex, but they don't get like into like nude scenes or adults with like kids and things like that. Just little things. I will say one of my favorite parts, which I love it because it's, it's awkward in the moment, but it's more awkward for the audience is the girls are going out. So the pastor like immediately gets a hold of pastor's wife and talking about, I want to get you girl like you. And I'm like, that is hysterical. And that is real life because, you know, in the church, everyone's like taboo about all of this real life stuff. But yet reality is this is what life is really like. Um, so I liked all of that. And I love the fact that it, even though it's a coming of age story and it's very, very predictable, they do give you things along the way with all the other characters. It's not entirely about just Sam or even Jess. And Jess probably doesn't have as much of a story arc as Sam does. But you get a little bit of from the pastor's wife and what her journey would be. You get a little bit about the pastor himself. He's kind of at odds with like the big mega church guy. You know, he's a bishop and he should know all this stuff. But, you know, their church is like in a concrete warehouse building. He's got tattoos because he came to the Lord much later with all of his, you know, warts and, and sins. Right. So. I think all of that makes this so much more superior than some of the sanitized stuff and also than some of the like the really dirty stuff where Hollywood likes to pretend that they understand the church because none of that's real. This is at least a lot more uh, representative of what mainstream Christianity is as far as like the struggle is real, right? The struggle is real. How to reach teens, how to deal with the stuff that's going on, envy, jealousy, betrayal, all that works. Um, Sam is put in a situation for some reason she knows how to get herself into that party. That's where it's done by this music guy who's made it. And they kind of have this, I don't want to say like a bond, but Sam's very, very talented, right? They tap into Chloe Bailey's talent of like putting like Jesus lyrics to a regular song. And he ultimately like helps her out with like, yeah, you should do my song. But then she lies and steals a song that he's been working on. So they get into themes of honesty and integrity without getting too crazy right uh the other characters help drive some of the some of the comic relief and also some of the little side nudges without like whole rabbit rabbit holes right so one of the teams that's going to compete at like the next level so they get past the, of course the team comes together they squeak by they get to move on each level so it's like a local level a regional level and then like a national level i guess or a regional state then national whatever it is it doesn't matter so it was like the second level or something but there's a there's a joke or a comment about they had they've been disqualified they can't perform and it's like oh there's a sex tape you know oh my gosh there's a ple pregnancy blackout like what's so i like the fact that some of these things happen with Sam and also with other characters without it derailing the whole story. Like we live in a world that's muddy and broken and bruised and messed up, but we don't have to get into Bible thumping. And we also don't have to like treat it all like it should all be okay. Like we're okay dealing with some of that kind of stuff. Of course, I think the finals, which was really great. Um, Sam does end up with like, and again, all the cliches are there. Don't think I'm promoting. This is not being, predictable because it is predictable right dad's going to show up he's going to reconcile with her he's going to tap into the feels he's going to try to get you a little bit about how he's proud the song is awesome it's also about you know being generous and kind and forgiving in its underdog thing don't think there was anything particularly woke political there's one comment about russian hacking which i thought actually was kind of funny because of how it was done uh, I think that it's not really anti-Christian. It's also not like beat you over the head. It's just, this is what it is. So this was really a pleasant surprise. I wish I had paid. I'd, I'd gotten some press stuff on this before and I hadn't done anything with it. So let me put a little bit of footage just so you can get an idea of some of the things that are there. There's Jess. This is that disaster scene where big love is just getting all nasty with it. Oh, these girls, these ladies. Oh, these ladies were the best. So they basically are the equivalent of the old guys in the Muppet Theater, right? So they are the black ladies with their weaves and their hats, cracking up jokes, kind of like a barber shop or coming to America. They're always cutting up and have lines. And let me tell you what, some of their jokes and lines are freaking great. I 
kind of need to like consider a download of some of this stuff because some of her those comments are, are just gold so again we don't go down a rabbit hole they're just there they 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 diffuse some tensions and things like that from time to time so now this is just them all coming together there's sam and this is them going out and you can see how different they are she's in like a church like more like a, a puffy shirt whereas sam is in like a leather jacket and all that uh let's see here this is them practicing yeah uh let me see and it's funny how because they're like they're trying to pep it up and figure out that this is the conflict so this is just one of the multitude of bands if you will competitors for the praise team thing and then of course there's this is the party house i didn't care for that scene nearly as much not because it didn't happen just because it just drug on too long that's the musician the musician guy his name turned out to be ty i didn't catch that early on but um he's all right he's a real life dude and stuff and these are really talented individuals so i will go ahead. this is them dancing some of those kind of shenanigans playing out this is near the film near the end where they're doing their thing uh let me see here. this is one of those uh, competitive groups and there's just all sorts of like you know back and floor forth and just and she does the uh you know bless your heart condescending christian stuff to them which i think also plays pretty well this is the one of the parties here's the finals oh there they are cutting up jokes cutting up more jokes this is them coming together the feel good stuff's there they tell you where it's going to go it's it's, it's all sort of like, this is this is that finale of that you know it's going to feel good it's going to end good that's kind of where you get with all that so uh again praise this it's over on peacock uh it's it's not it's just not the worst thing in the world. Like it's okay to have some fun and just be entertained and just do something that can remotely be solid for, you know, kids. And but it is a I mean it's edgy. So I'm gonna go PG thirteen. I don't know what it's rated, but I would say PG thirteen is is probably where it lands because there is a couple of moments that are at least risque conversation. Nothing on screen. There's no nudity or anything like that. Mild cussing, but it's not gross. Gross things like that. So that's my general stick with it. Hope you guys, uh, if you give it a chance, let me know what you guys think. Thank you again for watching. I am Pops.